Our nervous system, or the system of neurons in our body, can be divided into two main systems. The first is called the central nervous system, and the second is called the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes just two things, the brain and the spinal cord. And we can think about the brain as the one in charge where all of the decisions are being made. And we can think about the spinal cord as sort of the, the super highway of our body. Information comes to the brain through the spinal cord and leaves from the brain for the body also through the spinal cord. And so if I have a body right here, the body receives ascending sensory information and descending motor instructions. So sensory information is ferried through the spinal cord to the brain, and then the brain gives the body motor commands that are also sent down through the spinal cord to the rest of the body. But the brain isn't the only part of our body that makes decisions. The spinal cord is actually responsible for a number of things too. Specifically, the spinal cord is responsible for reflexes. So let's say that you're cooking something on a stove and that you don't realize that the pot that's on the stove is hot. And this has probably happened to you before in your life. And what happens when you reach out and grab that pot? Well, your hand is immediately pulled back. And you might be really surprised to know that this behavior, this simple hand withdrawal reflex, is controlled via your spinal cord and not your brain. So how does this work? Well, when you touch a hot pan, information about the heat goes from your hand to your spinal cord, which I'll draw very simply right here in pink. There, in the spinal cord alone, an interneuron takes that signal and passes it back to a motor neuron, which I'll draw here in green. So this is a sensory neuron, this is an interneuron, and this is a motor neuron. And by activating the motor neuron, the spinal cord tells your arm to engage muscles to pull back your hand. And all of this happens before your brain receives the signals and responds by causing you to feel pain. And that's why all of these reflex, this hand withdrawal reflex or the knee reflex when, you're, when your knee gets hit at the doctors, it's why all of these things feel like they're happening sort of without you being in control of them. But that doesn't mean that the brain can't have an influence on some of these reactions because you do have at least some control over some of your reflexes. So let's say you pick up this really hot pan. Well, let's say it's full of dinner that you've been cooking for hours and you have people and they're sitting at your dinner table and they're your guests and you really don't want to drop your tomato sauce all over them and all over the floor. Well, your brain can actually send inhibitory signals to inhibit this reflex from happening, at least up to a point. So if you can imagine your brain saying like, yep, yep, I know that that's hot. Just please don't drop it right now. Yes, I know you're being burned. You can run it under cold water later. That's the type of influence that your brain can have on this reaction. And thinking about this can help us understand another part of the central nervous system, which is what would happen if the connections between the brain and the spinal cord were severed. So let's say that we have a brain here. And let's say that we have our spinal cord down here. Well, imagine what would happen if an accident occurred and these connections were severed. Well, this would mean that sensory information would not be able to get to your brain, and it would also mean that motor commands could not get back to your body. You wouldn't be able to feel things like touch or pain. You'd lose all sensations and all voluntary control over all of your muscles. However, even with that being the case, assuming that the injury is happening high up enough on our spinal cord, things like the knee-jerk reaction would still be seen in that individual. One more thing I would like to mention about the spinal cord and the central nervous system is also about injury to the spinal cord and where it happens on your body. So let me draw a larger picture. So again, here we have the brain, here we have the spinal cord, and the places that our sense organs interact with our spinal cord follows our body map. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think it might first of all help to draw a quick body around this spinal cord, and I'm aware that this is not in the slightest bit anatomically correct. All right, so in this case, for this extremely long torsoed person, what we might see is that the neurons from the legs might talk to the spinal cord low down over here, and that's where the neurons that go from the spinal cord to the legs might also be. And then maybe right here, you would get neurons from the stomach and neurons to the stomach. And up here, you would get the neurons from our arms that give sensory information, and also the neurons from our spinal cord to our arms that communicate motor information. 
And so if someone were to get into an accident and if their spinal cord would be severed down here, that person would lose all feeling in their legs because the sensory information wouldn't be able to get to their brain. They would also lose all motor control of their legs because signals from the brain wouldn't be able to get to their legs. However, that person would be able to feel things from their upper torso and from their arms just fine, and they would also have full control over their arms. On the other hand, if an injury to the spinal cord happened at this higher level, then we would see with the arms exactly what we would also see with the legs. So everything from this portion down, so both the legs and the arms, would no, would no longer be on, under voluntary control because motor messages could not get to these areas from the brain. And at the same time, sensory messages, both from the legs and from the arms, would not be able to make their way back up to the body. But as I said before, even if the spinal cord was severed towards the bottom or towards the top, as long as this system remains intact, something like the knee tap reflex could remain intact because it does not rely on motor signals coming down the spinal cord to the legs. And so we've said that the brain and the spinal cord encompass the central nervous system. So what is the peripheral nervous system? Well, all of these sensory neurons and these motor neurons, that's what encompasses the peripheral nervous system. So all of these neurons that are going from our arms or from our legs or from our internal organs to our spinal cord and all of the ones that are going from our spinal cord to our arms, our stomach, or our legs, all of these neurons are on the periphery of the central nervous system. They are all part of the peripheral nervous system. And so the peripheral nervous system includes sensory neurons, as well as motor neurons. And the neurons of our central nervous system, the neurons that are in between the sensory neurons and the motor neurons, are referred to as interneurons. And just to be clear, the peripheral nervous system doesn't only include the neurons that are associated with our voluntary control. So it's not just the neurons that let us reach out to grab a coffee cup or let us kick a soccer ball. But it also includes the neurons that are outside of our central nervous system, that are outside of our spinal cord, that control the things that we are typically not aware of. So things like breathing or digesting our food. All of these things that are constantly happening in our body that we don't have control over, those are also considered to be part of the peripheral nervous system. And we call those systems the somatic and the autonomic nervous systems. The somatic nerves being the ones that are associated with things under our voluntary control, and the autonomic neurons being responsible for things that are not under our conscious control or things that we are not aware of. Things like the movement of food through our intestines. So the brain and the spinal cord, things that exert control, they're considered the central nervous system, while the sensory and motor neurons, the ones that are related to both voluntary control and involuntary control, those are part of the peripheral nervous system.